Hello students, to this MATLAB activity, we will be proving theorem 10.8 from circle. You have already done this theorem, but what we will do today is revising this theorem, but by a different method, that is through a MATLAB activity. The statement of the theorem is, the angle subtended by an arc at the center is double the angle subtended by the same arc at any other point on the circle. So students, let us start with the MATLAB activity based on this theorem. So what are the things that you require? Step one, let us see how to conduct the activity. Now I want you to take four sheets of paper of different colors. Well, if you don't have papers of different colors, you could take a white paper and maybe shade it with crayons. So these are four sheets of paper, either different colors or you could use papers of different textures. Step two. Now, these papers that you have in front of you, I want you to draw four congruent circles on them. Now, you could draw circles of radius 3 centimeter. You could also draw it of 2.5 centimeter or of 4 centimeter. Okay, whatever radius is convenient to you. So when you cut them, you get four congruent circles. Now see the third step. What I'm explaining to you out here is step-by-step -step method of conducting this activity. So step three. Once you have cut these four congruent circles, I want you to stack the circles on top of one another. Now the way you want to stack them depends on you. You could stack them in any order. There is no specific order for it. Just take care that all of them which are stacked, they coincide exactly with each other. And they will coincide exactly with each other because they are all congruent circles. Now what is the next step? After having stacked these circles, I want you to make a crease on them. So how do you make this crease? Where do you fold the circle? Now you have to fold it along any part in such a way that you get a chord. Now look at this circle out here. These are four congruent circles which are stacked one on top of another. Now I have folded this. The green circle is at the bottom. So when you fold it, you will get a crease like this. So I have shown you the crease. This is the crease that you get. Now don't you think this crease you will find on all the four circles? Yes, you will because you have stacked them up and you have pressed it. How you could get this crease is you could keep a foot ruler on it. Okay. And then you could press this paper along the ruler. So you will get this line. Now separate these four papers. So when you separate these four circles, what do you see? You will get crease on all these four circles and the length of this crease that you see, will it be equal? Yes. Why would they be equal? Because you have stacked congruent circles on one on top of the other and you have drawn the crease on one circle and obviously that crease will be seen on all the other circles too. So in short, haven't you drawn congruent chords? Yes. So this is the center of the circle and you get congruent chords. Now what do you do to this crease? Please have a look. This is step number six. Now you draw a line on the crease to form a chord. So you have circle one, then you have circle 2, circle 3 with the chord and circle 4 with the chord. And you will notice that if all the four circles are congruent and you have formed a crease on them, that chord that you get will also be congruent. So you get four congruent circles and four congruent chords. 
circle 1, circle 2, circle 3 and circle 4 are four circles each with the same length of the cord. Now what is step 7? In step 7, you mark the center of the circle. So you take the center of the circle and mark it as O. All the four circles are congruent. So we take the center of the circle and you can mark it as O. You could draw this chord with a sketch pen. You could use any colored pen for drawing the chords. Now after having done step 7, we move on to another step. Step 8. Now what is the procedure out here? You draw radii on the first circle and the fourth circle. So this is the first circle in blue and the last circle that I had was in green. So you draw the radii of the green circle also. Now what do you notice? O is the center of the circle. The radii will also be equal because they are congruent chords. So these two circles will have the same radii. Take the circle 1 and take the circle 4 and I want you to stick them in your MATLAB book. So that is step number 9. You will paste circle 1 and circle 4 in your MATLAB book as shown. Now where exactly are you going to paste it? You paste it in the extremes, circle 1 right ahead. And at the end, you will paste circle 4. Keep these two spaces empty. Okay. So what you have here are two congruent circles with chord AB. And length of chord AB is the same. The central angle is AOB. Here also the central angle is AOB. And these angles are congruent. So if AOB is 60 degree, this angle AOB will also be 60. If this angle AOB is 30 degree, this angle AOB will also be 30 degree. Okay. Now let us look at step number 10. Now in step 10, take the second circle and the third circle. And I want you to stack them on top of one another. The first circle and the fourth circle, we already stuck that in the MATLAB book. Now what do you do to circle 2 and 3? Bring it together. Join them together. Since the two circles are congruent, they will fit exactly into each other and their chords are also same. Now, what is the next step? Step number 11 is very important. I want you to follow these instructions. Now, in step 11, you are going to fold the circles from this end and here from this end. So fold it in such a manner. So what exactly are you going to do? You are going to get two crease. One crease is here and the second crease is going to be here. So you are going to fold this inwards and this portion you are going to fold it inwards. You will fold it by using a foot ruler. Keep a scale out here and then fold it. Okay. So what do you get? You will get a triangle. So both the triangles, if you notice, this angle that is formed here will be congruent. Okay? So this is exactly how the crease will look. So be very careful in this step, step 11. This chord is already there. Keep a scale out here and fold this region. Keep the scale out here and fold it. Okay? And when you do this on the first paper, the same thing will happen on this because the yellow paper is behind the red paper. Step number 12. Now you had the crease. Draw a line on that crease. So you get angle ACB and you get here also angle ACB. Why is it that I have named this angle as ACB and so is the case with this angle also ACB because these two angles will be congruent because I have stacked them one on top of the other and, and then I have folded it. So 
the angle that is formed will be concrete. Now let us see from this vertex C, how do I draw an arc on this? So for that, you need to take a compass, okay, and keep the compass on point C. Take any girth on this, the choice is yours. Place the pointer on C. Now, when you place the pointer on C, take any distance and draw an arc. See the way it is done? I have kept the pointer on C and you get this arc. Name this as EF. So, what you get is angle ECF. Take a scissor and cut this triangular region. When you cut it, this is what you get. Keeping the girth the same, not changing the distance, place it on C and do the same thing that you did in this red circle. So I keep the pointer on C and draw an arc. And when you draw an arc, students notice that this distance will be the same as this. Because you are not going to change the girth of this. So this is the next step. Have a look. I keep the pointer on C and you will draw another arc. Let us name it as G H. And you will notice C E will be equal to C G. C F will be equal to C H. Okay. So this is what you get after cutting it. And the cutout portion, keep it safe. When you cut this region, how does the entire figure look like? Let us have a look. Step number 13. Go back to your math lab book. And the two circles that you have cut, that is circle 2 and 3, you will now place it in your math lab book as shown. So students when you cut this the yellow portion disappears it is empty out here the red portion disappears it's empty out here. This is how your MATLAB book will look. You can name this as circle 1, 2, 3, 4 or you could name this as circle 1, this as circle 2, this as circle 3 and this as circle 4. You could give any number you like but take care that circle 1 and circle 4 are kept in the extremes. Now, what is the next step? Now, look at the fourth circle. You have the cutouts that was in red and yellow. That cutout, you will now place it here. You will notice that they exactly fit into this region EOH. That is the cutouts from those two circles will fit into this central angle EOH. So students, this was step number 14. Now let us understand how through this activity we have proved the theorem. So now these are the cutouts of the MATLAB activity that I have conducted. AOB is the central angle because it is the angle at the center. Okay. Now, this is figure 2. Now, in this figure, ACB is the angle on the circumference, that is angle C. Here also, angle ACB is the angle on the circumference. And here, angle AOB is the central angle. This portion is extremely important because this is the proof of the theorem. Now, look at the central angle AOB, this angle AOB. Isn't it equal to ECF plus angle GCH? Why is that so? I have already given you this example. If angle ECF is 60, angle GCH will also be 60. 60 degree and 60 degree, they exactly fit into this. That means what is AOB? AOB is 120 degree. If ECF was 50 degree, GCH will also be 50 degree. And that 50 degree, 50 degree, when you stick in this, it would exactly fit into each other 100 degree. That means this angle and this angle, when you join it together, they fit in this 
central angle AOB. So instead of ECF, I could write it as ACB because ECF is same as angle ACB. They are one and the same angle but with different names. Similarly, instead of GCH, I could name it as ACB. So instead of GCH, I have named it as angle ACB. When you add them, you get angle AOB equal to twice angle ACB. That means the angle at the center is double the angle subtended by the same arc at any other point on the remaining part of the circle. So students, through this activity method, we are showing that the central angle is always double the angle which is formed on the circumference if they are subtended by the same arc AB. So once again, I repeat, if you get this angle as 20 degree, then this angle would also be 20 degree because the circles are congruent, the chords are equal and these two angles are also equal. And so what would be angle AOB if each angle is 20? It would be 40 degree. That means whatever you cut here and this portion that is cut, they will exactly fit into this central angle AOB. Try it out. Okay. Now, this is the aim, the prerequisite knowledge. That is your previous knowledge. What you need to know in order to conduct this activity. The materials required. And in the next slide, you will see procedure, observation and conclusion. Students, I want you to take a screenshot of this and later you will copy this down in your MATLAB activity. So this is the procedure. This is nothing but a compilation of all those steps. Those steps I have made it in the form of a paragraph. Make a note of this. Take a screenshot of this slide and I want you to copy this down later in your MATLAB activity. And this is the observation. You will observe that the central angle is double the angle subtended by the same arc at any other point on the circumference. So students, I want all of you to complete this MATLAB activity in your MATLAB book. Procedures are very simple. Step-by-step -step procedure is given. You will conduct it, perform that activity at home. Either use colored paper or use papers of different textures or use a white paper and you could just color it with crayons. So you are not going to draw these circles in your MATLAB book. You have to put cutouts of these circles in the activity book. So until next class, goodbye and all the best.